Well, hey y'all, good morning. Today we're going to be making the a very important element that's going to go with our uh, one of our little desserts I'm going to show you to do for Easter. And this is out of our one of our very favorite cookbooks, Southern Living, The Ultimate, page 136, Coconut Macaroons. Now I'm going to make this gluten-free so us gluten-free people can have it. Now if you can eat gluten, yay you! Uh, you just pick you up a package of uh, 12 macaroon, coconut macaroons at the store and you're golden. But what I have in my dish already is two egg whites and I'm just going to entertain them just a little bit. And I'm going to add one third cup of white sugar and I have one and one third cup of uh, coconut. Now you can use, because this is going to be in a layered sherbet, yay sherbet, I love sherbet, a layered sherbet, it's going to be sweet enough, so you could use unsweet if that's what you have, but I had uh, sweetened and that that will be fine. So in that goes, and to this we're going to add, it doesn't call for, I shake everything y'all, for almond extract, but I think it it's going to give it just a little bit of a, an extra special little flavor. First off, I get ahead of myself, y'all. I'm going to use use whatever gluten-free flour you want to use. You just need it for the stickiness, the binding. And I'm going to use uh, King Arthur uh, gluten-free measure for measure because it was sitting in the front. No big deal on that. And I'm going to use two tablespoons. And you could use regular flour, you know. The very first time I made this over 30 years ago, it was a uh, Sunday afternoon and the stores were all closed. Of course, I lived in this in a little town and um, I don't know if they'd even had coconut macaroons anyway. But, so I made them from scratch and I've been doing this ever since and, and I just like it. Makes me happy. Okay, I'm going to add about... A little less than a, let's see, that's the fourth. I'm going to use a little less than a half because I don't want to, that's what I'm going to use on my homemade vanilla. i use a little less than half of uh, almond extract. There we go. Put the lid on that you'll know I'll spill that bigger than anything. Okay, now this is the vanilla, the homemade vanilla that we made on February the 19th of this year, 2022. It's not quite quite ripe yet but this is the one that was in vodka it looks exactly I had to write on it it looks exactly like the bourbon one but it's it's going to be fine for this and i'm going to use about a half a teaspoon and if you want to go back and watch that recipe from the 18th 19th rather um it's just really y'all i'll never have to buy vanilla again whenever this gets down i can just top it off with a little bit more vodka and and we're good to go. Alrighty, and to this, I'm going to use just, a, it says an eighth of a teaspoon of salt, but I'm just going to give it a pinch. And that is good right there. Now, my oven is heated to 350. Get out of there. And I'm just going to drop this on this cookie sheet that I have, uh, <coughs> that y'all are holding for me. Thank you. And I've got uh, some parchment paper in it and of course you know you could do these as, as cookies and, and just eat them like this and you could add <clears throat> excuse me some uh, uh mint flavoring and you could add a little bit of uh, some different coloring to it but i'm going to use this as part of my little crust now let me make sure i have everything because y'all know how i am okay i have my coconut sugar egg whites flour vanilla extract and Salt. I'm going to cook this at 350 for 20 minutes. Okay, now you could absolutely use a cute little uh, cookie um, scoop, you know, with the little ice cream scoop. I'm not going to. I'm just going to use my... <clears throat> I'm over the bronchitis. It's, it's just, you know, there's all that, that lingering business. But I'm just going to drop this by spoonfuls on this parchment paper. And if you'll take your parchment paper, I wad mine up, y'all. I gotta have both hands. 
I wad my parchment paper up and I run it underneath the sink of water and it like, makes it lay much better. So I'm just going to put these on my little sheet here and I'll put those in the oven and we'll get back together when they come out. So I'll see you back in a little bit. All right, y'all, these are out of the oven and they took 20 minutes. And I flattened them down a little bit um, because I'm going to get rid of that. I'm gonna crumble these up and I'm gonna to toast them. But I'm gonna just put them on a little, a little rack here. And if they fall apart, that's fine because this is just an ingredient to our layered sherbet that we're gonna do a little later. Now I'm gonna to toast some pecans and I'm gonna to toast these. And then we'll get back to, oh, ow, ow. <laughs> it's hot, y'all be careful. So anyway, <laughs> I'm gonna pay attention to what I'm doing and uh, I'll get back together whenever this is all done. So I'll see you back in a little bit. Okay, y'all, I'm gonna show you how to assemble this three layered sherbet dessert. And it's in, that is in this Southern Living cookbook. We just love these cookbooks, y'all. But it's called a Rainbow Sherbet Dessert. It's on page 194, if you're following along at home. But I'll include the, the recipe. What I have here is two cups of whipping cream, three tablespoons of powdered sugar, not regular white, but powdered sugar, and one teaspoon of vanilla. And I have beat it until it's uh, soft peaks. Now to this, I'm going to take my, let me, let me put this over here, y'all, before I drop it and make a mess. You know how it is around here? Okay, so I took the um, uh, uh, coconut macaroons that we made a while ago, and I toasted them in my iron skillet, just a dry iron skillet. But first I toasted some pecans. And I, I didn't do these together, but ju I just put them in this one dish so I could show y'all. But I'm gonna just put about half of the, I'm gonna put all of the pecans and about half of this other, because I don't wanna get too much. And we'll just see how this is. And then I'm just gonna fold, fold these in. Now I have my spring form pan, and to that I have added a circle of parchment paper. Now usually whenever I make this, I just, I just take it out on that little metal thing and, and put it on a plate and it's fine. But this time we're gonna to try to do it and make it where it'll come off and it, it'll be pretty for company. Okay, now that does not look like it's too many, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of these. Now you could, if you couldn't find any pretty fruit to put on top of it, you could, I think I will save a few of those. You could save some of this topping and sprinkle around on the top. But I did find some strawberries that I'm gonna uh, put on top. Now the three different kinds of sherbet that you use, and I, you could use ice cream if, if you preferred ice cream, but I just love sherbet in the springtime. It, it's just so springy. But I love raspberry, and I couldn't find any so, just plain raspberry, but I found kind of a, a mix, and it's gonna be fine. And then I have a layer of lime, and I have another layer that's gonna be orange. And it'd be really pretty. Okay, so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna put half of this into my springform pan. And you can see it, it's pretty stiff. And let's see, this looks like a good half. And I'm just gonna spread this around and you wanna make it go all the way up to the edges because you're going to be seeing the different layers on this and it makes a pretty presentation. And you could do this like this step today and tomorrow you could do your sherbet. This does not have to all be at the same time. Let me get up. Make sure that's nice and smooth, especially around the edges there. All right, now I'm gonna put this in the freezer and let it get frozen before I put, let me show you this raspberry. It's, it's pretty, it's got, a, it's got a swirl to it and it's gonna be fine. So I'm gonna let that sit out and kind of get pliable and I'm gonna put this in the freezer and I'm gonna put this in the regular refrigerator and I'll see y'all back when this is frozen and we're ready for our, our first layer. So see you back in a minute. Okay y'all, this is completely frozen. 
and I have two and a half cups of the raspberry. It has a little bit of orange in it. And y'all don't mind, that is the sunshine coming through those windows. I can't help it, y'all. But we're just so glad to see the sunshine. But this is just a little bit. I let it defrost just a little bit too much. I was trying to let that sunshine maybe get, get to do a little better so we could maybe see. But it's going to be okay. Woo! So I'm going to just spread this around. And then I'm going to put this right back into the freezer. And let this sherbet get to where it is completely frozen. And I think the next layer I'm going to use will be lime. And then the top layer will be uh, the orange. So I'm just going to get this very straight around the edges. Kind of humped up there in the middle. But there we go. Okay, I'm going to put this right back into the freezer. And I'll see you when we get ready to do the next layer. So see you a little back in a little bit. Okay, we're ready for our next layer, and this is gonna be lime sherbet. And this takes about 45 minutes to an hour to get frozen good, and when I take, when I put this in the freezer, I take my sherbet out. And so this is two and a half cups of lime sherbet. And I'm just gonna put her in here like this. I served this one time at a uh, garden club, and it was a, a real big hit, y'all. It's just so nice and, and light and, and cool. And I'm using a flat spoon. We just find all kinds of uses for these things, don't we? Okay, let's get this all spread around to those edges really good and flat. Okay. A turntable would have been nicer than a towel, but hey, y'all, whatever works. Okay. It's pretty smooth. All righty, I'm going to put this right back. Get that down there. I'm going to put this right back in the freezer, and I'll get our next layer out and let it get to get soft, and then we'll, we'll be done with this. I'll see you back in just a little bit. All righty, we're going to add our last layer of sherbet, and this is going to be orange. And we're just going to see if the whole two and a half cups will fit on here. And I, well, we'll see. We'll just see how, how far it goes. But, y'all, there is a, you can add sherbet to Sprite and just have a wonderful punch. And you can have just any color of sherbet with Sprite and it will go with your, basically with any bride's uh, colors that they choose. So, you know, you can have a nice, cool little uh, sherbet punch at a, let's just put the whole thing in there. Stop, stop playing with it. There we go. All righty. Okay, let's get this around here. Get it all smooshed up against those edges. And I think I've got some Sprite. That sounds really good. I might have to fix a little, a little one of those. That would be good and refreshing, wouldn't it? Okay, now I'm gonna put this get this edge real, real smooth, and then I'm gonna put this back in the freezer. And the next time we get together, we will put the the topping on it, and then put a few little pretties on top of it. So there it is. Okay, see y'all back whenever this comes out of the freezer. Okay, y'all, we're gonna finally put this top on it, and I'm gonna wait until tomorrow to I'm gonna cover it with plastic wrap and put it back in the freezer and let it get really good and solid. And then tomorrow we'll cut it. And I wash some strawberries and we will uh, put those on top. And I've got my little crumbles over there that I had left over. And I will, um, I'll put those on there as well. But I'm just gonna push this around to the, to the edge. And what I'll do, I'll take some toothpicks and put in the top of it, and then that way the plastic wrap won't touch the top, and it, it'll keep it really pretty. Now you could smooth this down if you wanted to, or you could just kind of, if you wanted to have that little rustic look, you could just do whatever you wanted to do on the top, but I'm just gonna leave it just like that. 
and I'll see y'all tomorrow and we'll cut us a big old, a small little hunk. We'll just see how we feel about that size. So I'll see y'all tomorrow. We'll finish this up. Well, good morning, y'all. We're going to finish up our layered sherbet dessert today. And I put it in the freezer last night. I covered it with saran wrap and I'm going to save this. And I also put toothpicks in it to keep the saran wrap off of the whipped topping. And it's still pretty frozen really well. And it's been sitting out about five minutes or so. And it probably should be sitting here more. But we're just going to do it anyway. And it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. And I'll save these toothpicks. And I'll, I'll reuse these when I get ready to put this back in the freezer. Now, I also picked up some strawberries the other day at the store. And what I did with them... I had my, my big glass bowl, and I filled it with water, and I put about this much vinegar in it. That's it, there's no measuring. And then I, I sloshed my strawberries around in it, and then I rinsed them off. And that kills all of the, because you don't know where these have been, y'all, and that kills all of the ugh, that's on them, and then you've got a good, fresh, clean berry. And I, of course, I washed this container real well with hot sudsy water, and so this is clean. It can go back in the refrigerator and our strawberries will stay better longer. So let's just, I'm going to let this sit here just a little bit longer. And I have been thinking about this lime sherbet Sprite situation since we talked about it yesterday. So I've just got my little jar and I'm going to put a little scoop, couple little scoops of lime jello in there. And I'm just going to pour my Sprite over it. Slowly, so it doesn't get too big for the for the little glass. And this is real cute to do with your little girls. You can have a little tea party and and have just sherbet and and a little sprite, and they'll think they're big. All right, now let's see if we can get this out of this springform pan. Okay, there we go. We're opening it up. Okay, I'm probably gonna wish I'd taken a knife around the middle, aren't I? Okay, let's see here. Come on now. Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay, let me put this in the sink. How pretty. Let's see if I can show y'all without making a mess. Look at those layers. Isn't it just gorgeous? Oh, it's just so pretty. Now, what I am going to put this on, of course, if... Here at the cabin, it's all kind of rustic, so we got a board. But, you know, if I was at home, I've got my little my glass and, and those pretty little things like that. So that's what I would do if I was at home. And this would be really pretty on a, a footed pedestal. And I am going to leave it on the metal tray for now. Now, I did uh, these strawberries. I did cut the, the end of it off the... Uh, the leaves because they were kind of dried out. But if you had some spearmint, you could dress up the edges and that would really be pretty. But my spearmint is about that tall, obviously not big enough. And I did take the uh, crumbles that we had left over and I put those on top just to make it pretty. So we're gonna slice us a little slice of this. And I'm gonna use a sharp knife. Come on out of there, baby. And, of course, you know, when you're cutting, uh, I'm cutting this like a pie, but if you're cutting a cake, you know, you cut more of a square, uh, square pieces. Uh, someday we'll, we'll do that. But let, let me, let me get this other little thing over here. See if I can get between that paper. There we go. There we go. And look at that. Is that not pretty? That certainly is. I think it is anyway. Let me get to that. Okay, let's let's just see what we think about this. I, I tell you what, I am gonna turn this over before I try to get a big bite of it because I'll be wearing it. Y'all, it tastes like springtime. Oh, that's so good. 
If you make this for Easter, let me know. Um, or a bridal shower, a birthday. It's just a good, versatile little little easy put together. You can do this a couple days in advance, cover it well, keep it in the freezer, and you are done. You're ahead of the game. So I'm just gonna have this, and I'm gonna have my little my little shower punch, and I will see y'all next time, and y'all go make yourself good with some sherbet and have some fun while you're at it. See you later.